Hey everyone, this is Mike and welcome to F2F Tech. Today we'll be taking a look at the fastest card of 2007, the NVIDIA 8800 Ultra. Released in May of 2007, the Ultra was poised to counter ATI's R600 launch. The primary purpose of the Ultra was to secure the GPU crown for NVIDIA, which it did successfully for the remainder of the year. Its other purpose was to promote high profit margins as it was one of the most expensive consumer graphics cards coming in at a whopping $830. US Price-wise, you could even call it the OG Titan. But unlike the Titan, the 8800 Ultra is mostly just an overclocked 8800 GTX. Yes, there were some slight revisions made to the silicon, and it did use faster Samsung memory, but it really didn't offer much performance over an overclocked 8800 GTX. However, with these revisions, higher frequencies were attainable. Most Ultras overclocked to speeds that most GTXs could only dream about. Along with these aforementioned improvements, NVIDIA also crafted a new look to its cooler. It was practically the same as the 8800 GTX, but the fan was moved up to add some of that sexy bump you see here. I will say, once most GPU enthusiasts see this iconic bump, they know exactly what card it is. The sample we're looking at today was purchased locally, and from the looks of it, the previous owner took really good care of the card. After installing the card and ensuring that it was in working condition, I removed the heatsink and fan and noticed the thermal paste was dried up. Looking at the heatsink, we can see the thermal pads are still in great shape for a card of this age. Removing the shroud gives us a great view of the heatsink, which is identical to the 8800 GTX. There wasn't much dust to be found, but I took a brush and cleaned out the fan and, and removed some of the dust in the heatsink. After I applied some fresh thermal paste, I put her back together. Now with most of my testing, I like to include stock and overclock results. So let's take a look at overclocking. To do this, I fired up MSI's Afterburner to see what I could squeeze out of this old champ. I was able to increase the core from 612 megahertz to 702 megahertz. That's nearly a 15% improvement. And looking at the memory, we went from 1080 MHz to 1134 MHz, which is a 5% improvement. And while not shown here, the shader clock was also overclocked. It went from 1512 MHz to 1728 MHz. Since we recently lined up the 8800 GTX and the 2900 XT, it was only natural to include their results as well. We will be primarily comparing the Ultra against the GTX to really see how it stacks up against its little brother. And with our testing, we chose 10 games with release dates ranging from 2007 to 2013. All right, well, with that out of the way, let's jump straight into the benchmarks. The first game up is Far Cry 3. And here we use the medium preset at 720p. The Ultra averaged 60 frames per second, which is 9% ahead of the stock clock GTX. Comparing overclock results, we can see the Ultra increased its lead to 11%. Frame times on all the cards tested were excellent, and we can see this title heavily favors NVIDIA cards. GTA 5 is always on our shortlist of games to benchmark. Here we're using the normal quality settings throughout with 16x AF. The Ultra averaged 56 frames per second, which puts it ahead of the GTX by 7%. Comparing overclock results, we can see the Ultra has a 12% lead over the overclocked GTX. Frame times were solid for the green team, but the 2900 XT really held its own in average frame rates. Next up is a 2013 version of Tomb Raider. Here we use the normal preset at 720p. The Ultra pushed out 80 frames per second on average, and that's about an 8% increase over the GTX. Looking at our overclock results, we can see the Ultra took 11% lead over the overclock GTX. This is another game where the green team shines, as the Ultra is 73% faster than the stock XT. Now on to the racing game in our test suite, Dirt 3. Here we're using the medium preset at 1080p. The Ultra averaged 61 frames per second, which is only 5% faster than the GTX. And then moving on to our overclock results, the Ultra maintains that lead, but only by 7%. Seems this game doesn't respond very well to overclocking on any of the cards tested, but on a positive note, frame times were excellent throughout. Next, let's take a look at Metro Last Light Redux. And here we're using the medium quality settings at 720p. The Ultra averaged 47 frames per second, which is only 4% faster than the stock GTX. 
and then comparing the overclock results we can see the ultra's lead increased to 8%. Again this game doesn't seem to respond very well to overclocking, but at least the frame times were solid throughout. Since Witcher 3 isn't an option, we tested the Witcher 2. And here we're using the medium spec preset at 720p. The Ultra came in at 41 frames per second, which is about 10% faster than the stock GTX. This was one of the few games in which the stock clocked Ultra was able to beat out the overclocked GTX. But as you can see, it wasn't by much. Comparing overclock results, the Ultra was faster by 12%, but you can see none of the cards here could really tackle this game very well. The super popular CSGO is up next, and here we're testing the Inferno map with medium settings at 1080p. The Ultra mustered 46 frames per second on average, which happens to be identical to the GTX results. Overclocked, we saw a gain of 1 FPS, which is about 2%, well within the margin of error. It seems in this game, the Ultra couldn't maintain its lead over the GTX, but frame times were fine on all the cards tested. Now on to test the amazing stalker Call of Pripyat. Here we're testing the game at 1080p with the medium preset along with DX10 enabled. The Ultra spit out 64 frames per second, which is only a 6% lead over the GTX. Comparing overclock results, the Ultra ended up being 9% faster than the GTX. The ATI card had a tough time with this game, but hopefully the HD3870 fares a bit better when we throw it into our comparison down the road. Now on to test one of the newer games in our suite, Bioshock Infinite. Here we're using the medium preset at 720p. We saw 56 frames per second on average with the Ultra, which was only 5% faster than the GTX. Looking at the overclock results, we can see the Ultra was 8% faster as well. The Ultra was the only card to hit the 60 FPS mark, and frame times look great for every card tested. Finally, the last game in our test suite, and that game is Crisis. Here we selected high settings at 720p. The Ultra came in at 43 frames per second on average, which is only 4% ahead of the GTX. And now looking at the overclock results, the Ultra ends up 9% faster versus the overclock GTX. Hopefully when I test my 8800 GTs and SLI we'll hit that 60 FPS mark, as none of these old beasts can do it. Now let's take a look at temperature and fan speeds. We use the Witcher 2 to get our GPUs to the max temperature. The 8800 Ultra topped out at 85 degrees Celsius with the fan speed left on auto. With this setting the fan stabilized at 70%. Now let's take a look at the overclock result. And here we maxed out the fan at 100% and the Ultra topped out at 82C. Looking at the Ultra and the GTX, there isn't a huge difference comparing stock clocks and the auto fan speed. Now overclocking the Ultra you can see it's at its limit of what the stock heatsink can really handle. I will say with both these cards at 100% fan speed, they're really not loud at all, especially compared to some of the newer cards today. Up next, let's take a look at power consumption. Again, we use the Witcher 2 to put a load on our GPU and the entire system. Here we can see the stock Ultra pulling 242 watts at the wall, and overclock it rose 7% to 259. Now comparing the stock numbers, we can see the Ultra pulls 11% more power versus the GTX. And that's pretty much on par with the HD 2900 XT stock and overclocked. Again, these numbers are out the wall, so they don't account for PSU efficiency. So moving into our conclusion, we can see the Ultra is only 6% faster than our stock 8800 GTX. And if we compare overclock results, it's almost 9% faster than the overclock GTX. Now these numbers are pretty much in line with what a lot of reviewers were seeing back in 2007, so pretty much none of them made a recommendation to buy the Ultra. 230 US dollars over the asking price of the 8800 GTX was a lot considering you're seeing less than a 10% performance game. That being said, the Ultra is still popular among enthusiasts. Now with a Volt mod and slapping on a water block, some of these cards could really scream, which pretty much made them a really fun card to overclock. While this card did keep its crown all throughout 2007, in October of the same year Nvidia released their first G92 based card, the 8800 GT, a card that brought similar performance to the masses. All right, everyone, well, that wraps up our look at the 8800 Ultra. I have a number of other cards from the same time frame, so let me know if you'd like to see an all-out comparison at some point. And if you like this type of content, then consider subscribing and checking out the rest of my channel. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video.